the synthesis of tin for iodide. Attention! In these experiments, toxic, caustic and harmful compounds are used. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of these experiments. The synthesis is done in a simple reflux apparatus. To the round bottom flask the following was added. 3.3 grams of tin, 13 grams of iodine and 165 milliliters of dichloromethane. Then a Dimroth condenser was added and the mixture was heated to a reflux with a water bath. When the temperature increases, the amount of iodine vapors in the condenser also increases. The following simple reaction takes place. Tin and iodine react to form tin 4 iodide. The dichloromethane acts as a solvent for the iodine and the tin iodide. Nevertheless, other solvents like chloroform, ethyl acetate or toluene could also be used. The reaction should be finished after about 40 minutes and when no iodine is present in the cooler anymore. But the color of the dichloromethane stayed the same which was an indicator for the presence of iodine. After 1.5 hours the heating was stopped. A funnel was plugged with cotton wool and the hot solution was added to the funnel. This prevents the crystallization of the product before the residual tin was removed. The solution was left overnight because it became late at this point. Next, a simple distillation was used to remove a part of the dichloromethane and increase the concentration of the solution. About two-thirds of the solvent should be distilled off, which would be 110 milliliters. Unfortunately, a 100 milliliter round bottom flask was the only one available. Dichloromethane has its boiling point at 40 degrees C, so a water bath is sufficient for heating. In the distillation it could be seen that the separated solvent contained iodine, which meant that the residual iodine was still present. When the receiving flask was full, the heating was stopped to empty it. But at this point, crystals began to form in the distilling flask, indicating that enough solvent had already been removed. The flask was left to cool and then put in the fridge overnight. The next day a larger amount of crystals had formed which were then filtered off. The product was removed with a vacuum filtration which helps to prevent the solution from heating up again and causing a part of the product to redissolve. Then 10 ml of cold dichloromethane were used in small portions to wash out the residual product. Beautiful crystals of tin 4 iodide were obtained. The filter paper was stained by the residual iodine. When the crystals had dried on air for a bit, they were dried in a vacuum. The evaporation of the solvent should cause the flask to cool down, which didn't happen. So it was obvious that the solvent had already been removed. To calculate the yield, the residual tin that had been removed after the reaction was weighed out. In total, 2.95 grams of tin had reacted. 11.43 grams of tin 4 iodide were obtained, which corresponds to a yield of 73%. To increase the yield, the filtrate could be boiled down even more. Tin 4 iodide has its melting point at 144.5 degrees C and boils at 364.5 degrees C. Interestingly, it looks similar to bromine in its liquid state until it cools down and crystallizes again. Tin 4 iodide can be used to prepare hexaiodo metal complexes. These are rare because they are unstable. According to some literature, it only has to be dissolved in an organic solvent and a saturated solution of sodium or potassium iodide has to be added. 
This should cause the formation of the complex hexaiodostenate, but a slight smell of iodine and the color of the solution did seem odd, so something else might have happened. An old German paper said that the complex is only stable with rubidium or cesium as the counter ion of the complex. Unfortunately, I didn't have cesium or rubidium iodide at hand to test it. When tin for iodide comes in contact with water, a slow hydrolysis takes place. In it, insoluble tin for oxide and hydrogen iodide are formed. The hydrogen iodide causes the solution to become strongly acidic. It can be oxidized by the oxygen from the air, which causes iodine to form slowly and leads to the color of the solution. To test for iodine, a solution of starch can be used. The typical complex of iodine and starch is formed. The tin oxide goes back into solution after a while, but precipitates again on heating. This were the synthesis and a few properties of tin 4 iodide. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see more synthesis you can watch my playlist here, or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.